I was doing okay until Callum let slip that he was 16 in the year 2012. I'll actually have socks that are older than Callum. <laughs> Hello, Liverpool! I like being here, hometown gig. I'm actually from Liverpool myself. I know I don't sound especially scouse. And to bear in mind, I haven't lived this since I was a kid. As we've just established, it's a long time since I was a kid. And I was a bit of a middle class twat to start with, so what are you gonna do? Not actually half scum, I'm not entirely scouse, I don't. Half Scottish, half scouse. Very tight with money, I haven't got any. Hey. 25 years later, that one's still not a fucking joke. Anyway, let's go look at you. <laughs> it's weird though, I've been back for about 24 hours and the accent's creeping up on me already. You can hear the comic guy, it's weird. Every time I come out to Liverpool, ever meet any of my old scouts mates and I just talk to them about my, my sort of BBC voice that I have these days. Fuck, I'm to your fucking accent mates, I don't know, I just wear bloody talk now. So, you know. then, I'm in, then I'm here for 36 hours and go back down to London. What the bloody hell? I don't know, I'm not fucking doing it on papers. <laughs> Weird, the way it creeps up on you. Ah, let's get a look at you. Where are the couples in the room? Couples in the room, say hello, make yourselves known. Couples, 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 couples. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, the rest of you is just sitting there looking smug. <laughs> it's a Monday night. It's Liverpool. Pretty much anything could happen. But this one is mainly uh, directed at those of you in a relationship of one kind or another. Oh, baby, I'm sorry. If I don't always look my best My hair needs combing And there's gravy all over my vest But you kinda understand Baby, I'm a man And we say things differently So that means, baby, I love you And means I'll always be there And if I leave my dirty pants on the coffee table It's just my way of showing how much I care Means I'm really listening And means I'm dreaming of you With every noise and every spell you know I'm just trying to tell you you made my dreams come true With all the cooking and cleaning you do Baby, I'm sorry If this ain't how you thought we'd live ever Oh, I know that sometimes I can be uncommunicative But you know words are hard to say and I got so many other ways To show what I mean to me So <laughs> means can you forgive me And <laughs> means my love is still strong And if I accidentally we on the bathroom floor, babe It's just my way of showing where I belong So <laughs> First thing every morning And I'll lead every night If I don't show too much compunction About my bodily functions It's cause they're all for you You see Now what have you made for my tea? Yeah, I never 100% uh, convinced that the irony of that one successfully connects with everybody in the room, but... <laughs> Bollocks! <laughs> you clapped! And that'll do for me.
than when he first turned up He seemed a reasonable bloke with a contemporary spin on contemporary folk And people wondered if it might get far with his orange hair and his small guitar But a few years later and his ubiquitousness He's reaching levels that are kind of ridiculous Try to avoid him, it ain't no use It makes Rihanna look like a recluse And now there's Ed Sheeran on my radio And there's Ed Sheeran every TV show There's Ed Sheeran coming out my phone There's Ed Sheeran on Game of Thrones There's Ed Sheeran on my laptop screen There's Ed Sheeran in my washing machine Don't sit down, check underneath your chair Ed Sheeran gets everywhere mm -mm. Comes under your door cause he's that small, no really, I've met him, he's like four feet tall And while he seems to be a nice enough guy, he's following me everywhere, why oh why not In the morning when I raise my head, I expect to see him squatting on the end of my bed Strumming away at those same four courts like Colin with a Grammy Award And now there's Ed Sheeran had it in my fridge, there's Ed Sheeran in my sandwich, there's Ed Sheeran on my garden path and there's Ed Sheeran crawling out my bath, there's Ed Sheeran Knocking at my door, there's Ed Sheeran in my underwear drawer, there's Ed Sheeran running down my back, there's Ed Sheeran in my ass crack, there's Ed Sheeran getting under my skin, there's Ed Sheeran getting further in, and there's Ed Sheeran up inside my head, and there is no me anymore, there's just Ed Cars. Ed Sheeran's taking over now, he's gonna turn us all into himself somehow. The whole human race is disappearing just to be replaced by Ed Sheeran, who's your mate? It's Ed Sheeran. What's your name? Not anymore. It's Ed Sheeran. Call your mum. Too late. It's Ed Sheeran. Nice doggy. Uh -uh. It's Ed Sheeran. Even my wife and my darling daughter have ginger hair and are a good foot shorter. And everyone thinks it's super duper. Playing on a small guitar with a looper, which some of us are doing already. It's a deadly. Shit, you don't think he got it from me. I was only trying to have a bit of musical fun. My God, what have I done? Am I to blame? Is it my fault that the human race is now a singing gingerly stunt? Am I condemned from my own lips? Did I cause the Ed Sheeran apocalypse? No! Nah, it's probably Katie Tunstall. There you go. Right. I, uh, oh, dear me. Oh, yes. It's kind of exhausting. Just got back from Edinburgh. That's why the voice is knackered. Ah, oh, dear me. You guys have been, haven't you? Ah. Very good friend of mine would said to me, Mitch, always leave them wanting more. So uh, he didn't last long as an anesthetist. But still, I'm, um, well done to my best damn joke, seriously. I've written maybe six actual gags in my entire career. That's very much my favorite one. Thank you for appreciating it. <laughs> well, I'm glad you enjoyed this for whatever bloody level you did. <clears throat> Let's be honest, you had some fairly major doubts to come out of, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I could tell. Yeah, yeah, you know, so you're looking fakely intimidated, actually. Uh, I can see, particularly, I know it can be a bit visually confusing, particularly with this thing. This curious little dinky guitar. It is, I know. Everybody at the bass going, Christ, how fucking big is that guy? But, um, <laughs> fucking enormous but it's a dinky guitar I leave you with this my love of music and my love of science fiction come together in my favorite record of all time it's a record that came out in the late 1970s entitled Jeff Wayne's musical version of the war of the worlds Better love for Jeff Wayne. Rest of your iTunes and or Spotify, the son of a Mr. Second to get home, all right? Trust me, you need this record in your life. Remember the title, Jeff Wayne's musical version of the War of the Worlds. The whole of H.G. Wells' tale of the Martian conquest of Earth, rendered in disco-inflected rock opera form. It's every bit as fucking mental as it sounds. So now, do try and get hold of the original version narrated by Richard Burton rather than the remake narrated by Liam Neeson. Much as I like Liam Neeson, you want Richard Burton. I do like Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson comes in handy. Right now you ever have to call customer services of any company for any reason, shit moves a lot faster when you do the Liam voice. It does. I was assured someone would be around to fix my washing machine. <laughs> Sometime between 11 o'clock this morning and 2 this afternoon, 
That's not 145, and there's been no signs of anyone. You get cold called by anybody, whether it's like PPI or whatever, just answer with, I don't know who you are, I don't know what you want, the fuck off. I am. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bollis, get the Liam Neeson version if you must. I'm quite interested in what it sounds like, but do get yourself Jeff Wayne's musical version. The War of the Worlds. And I first heard this record, I was what, like about 11 years old? It just blew me freaking mind, changed my life. And ever since I first heard Jeff Wayne's musical version of The War of the Worlds, I've wanted to do something like Jeff Wayne's <laughs> musical version of The War of the Worlds. Same kind of idea, same kind of principle. Get a book, yeah? Get a, a timeless literary classic, a beloved work of popular fiction, and adapt the whole bastard thing in symphonic rock fashion. So I have fucking done it. Now, um, obviously, so as not to take up the rest of your evening and a decent-sized chunk of tomorrow, I have chosen to adapt an altogether uh, shorter book than H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds, but I'm still quite pleased with how it's turned out. So I would like to present for you now if I may, Mitch Ben's musical version of The Very Hungry Caterpillar. <laughs> Here we go, three, four. <laughs> he was born from an egg and a leaf on a branch on a tree. He had an apple and two pears, three plums and four strawberries. After five oranges, he wasn't satisfied. So he had a piece of cake and ice cream, cold and pickle, and some cheese, and sausage, and a lollipop, salami, and a cupcake, watermelon, and a piece of pie. A piece of cherry pie. <laughs> that night, he had a storm okay <laughs> To eat so much had been a mistake. Some nice green leaf and he'll feel better soon He made himself a new cocoon <laughs> What was he doing inside? When would he come out? Two weeks in there he did hide What was it all about? Morning, night, afternoon, not so much as a word But inside the cocoon something had occurred He poked his head out at last, he opened up his eyes And spread magnificent wings, take to the skies But a flood, hey, but a flood, hey, but a flood Thank you.